The Brooklyn zip code that includes the vast Sterrett City subsidized housing complex has the highest rate of coronavirus-related deaths in New York City, according to official data released on Monday. The zip code, 11,239, is also home to the highest percentage of people over 65 in the city, the data shows. 76 people from a population of about 12,400 have died of the virus, or about one in every 165 residents. Officials have been releasing data on virus cases by zip code for several weeks, but they had only given borough breakdowns for deaths previously. The 11,239 area, which includes parts of the Canarsie and Flatlands neighborhoods, also has one of the city's highest infection rates. Nearly 4% of its residents have tested positive for the virus. Of the 10 zip codes with the highest death rates, 8 have populations that are predominantly black or Hispanic, only 11,354, which is mostly Asian, and 11,224, where more than half of the residents are white, do not. The 10 zip codes with the highest death rates, including 11,239, are The virus has hit immigrant New Yorkers disproportionately hard, and three zip codes in Queens that are among the 10 with the highest death rates, 11,354, 11,369 and 11,372, have populations that are mostly foreign-born. The zip code with the most deaths in the city is 11,368, Corona, Queens, where 369 people have died of the virus, or one of every 302 people. Private cleaners hired by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority to scrub down more than a dozen subway stations as part of a nightly system-wide sanitizing effort may not be getting paid as much as they should be, according to the city controller. In a letter released on Monday, the controller, Scott M. Stringer, urged the authority to see that the workers, who are augmenting transit cleaning crews as part of the unprecedented push to disinfect the subway, receive the wages to which they are legally entitled. These workers are risking their own health and that of their families to ensure that New Yorkers, especially our frontline workforce, can use our transit system safely, Mr. Stringer said in the letter. Mr. Stringer was questioning whether private contractors hired as part of the coronavirus-related shutdown were being paid in line with so-called prevailing wage rules. The Daily News reported on Monday that some private cleaners were receiving $15 to $18 an hour with no benefits. Under prevailing wage rules, such workers could receive a little more than $20 an hour plus benefits to start, according to Mr. Stringer's office. As evidence of possible unfair pay, a spokeswoman for Mr. Stringer cited a flyer that listed pay for potential subway cleaners at $15 an hour for 40 hours of work. A person answering at the number on the flyer said that all of the jobs had been filled and that someone would return a reporter's call seeking comment. In a statement, Ken Lovett, an authority spokesman, said the agency was committed to paying fair wages. As the controller knows, the MTA pays prevailing wage in keeping with state and federal standards and is committed to fair pay for all those who work in any capacity inside the NYC transit system, Mr. Lovett said. As the coronavirus shows signs of retreat in New York, New Jersey and Connecticut, officials are now focusing on reopening their states. This week starts with retail stores in New Jersey being allowed to offer curbside pickup of goods. Non-essential construction projects in the state can also resume, and gatherings like religious services and drive-in movies will be allowed as long as people stay in their cars. Starting Friday, batting cages, golf driving ranges, horse riding and private tennis clubs can open, Governor Philip D. Murphy said on Monday. Golfers will be allowed to play in foursomes, after previously being restricted to playing in pairs. In Connecticut, offices and retailers can reopen on Wednesday, but only at half capacity and with social distancing restrictions. Restaurants can also open on Wednesday, but only for outdoor dining. The state had also planned to allow hair salons and barbershops to open on Wednesday, but Governor Ned Lamont said on Monday that officials had decided to hit pause before letting such businesses start up again. In New York, some businesses in five upstate regions became eligible on Friday to begin Phase 1 of the state's reopening plan. A sixth section, the western region, including Buffalo, can start to reopen on Tuesday, Governor Andrew M. Cuomo said on Monday.
the region around Albany needs only to hire more contact tracers before it can enter phase one. In the regions that can restart, construction, manufacturing, and wholesale trade can resume. Retail businesses that sell clothing, electronics, furniture, books, sporting goods, shoes, flowers, jewelry and some other types of goods can open for curbside service. Other activities that are allowed to operate include drive-in movies, landscaping and gardening services and, low-risk recreational activities, like tennis. Mr. Cuomo also encouraged sports teams in the state to start planning to hold games, but without fans in attendance. If they can make the numbers work, I say, great, come back. The state will work with you, Mr. Cuomo said, adding that he was looking forward to seeing the Buffalo Bills in action. His remarks came even as the New York City region, where most of the state's major sports franchises are, has not been cleared to open non-essential businesses. Mr. Cuomo also reported on Monday that 106 more people in the state had died of the virus, the lowest one-day toll since March 26. And he revealed the results of the virus test he took on live television on Sunday, negative. In the first weeks after the coronavirus pandemic hit New York, Dr. James A. Mahoney barely slept. When he was not working his day shifts at an intensive care unit at University Hospital of Brooklyn, he was working nights across the street at Kings County Hospital Center. When he was not at a hospital, he was conducting telemedicine sessions with his regular patients from home, making sure they were wearing masks and washing their hands. He would run from crashing patient to crashing patient, always at the bedside where it was most dangerous. He rushed in to help when his boss, Dr. Robert F. Foranji, was struggling with a patient sick with the virus, doing chest compressions and switching out a blocked endotracheal tube. Then he was off again. There were people who were really reluctant to go into the rooms, and you could understand why, Dr. Foranji said. He saw another human being in need, and he didn't hesitate to help. After nearly 40 years as a physician, Dr. Mahoney, 62, could have retired. Others his age, including his older brother, also a doctor, stopped seeing hospital patients as the pandemic loomed, worried that age or health issues put them in greater danger than younger colleagues. Friends, family and fellow physicians begged Dr. Mahoney to do the same. He had been on the front lines for AIDS, the crack epidemic, the September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks, Hurricane Sandy. Why not skip this one, they asked. Take a break, save yourself. He would not do it. Dr. Mahoney belonged on the floor, and that is where he would stay, until the end. On April 27, he succumbed to the virus he had fought so vigorously. While much of the rest of the state begins to reopen, New York City and its suburbs have yet to meet all of the seven health-related benchmarks Mr. Cuomo established as requirements for allowing non-essential businesses and activities to resume. Mayor Bill de Blasio said Monday that he expected the city to satisfy the governor's criteria in the first half of June. The standards the city has not yet met are the Mid-Hudson region, which includes Westchester, Rockland and several other counties north of the city, has not met the standards for declines in deaths, reductions in new hospitalizations or the hiring of contact tracers. Long Island has not experienced the necessary drop in deaths or brought on enough contact tracers. Governor Murphy released the following daily virus-related statistics for New Jersey on Monday. Starting Monday, New York City car owners will have to move their vehicles to make way for street sweepers for the first time in two months. Alternate side parking rules are in effect this week, except for Thursday, when they will be suspended for the Feast of the Ascension. The rules will then go back into hibernation for at least two more weeks, Mr. de Blasio said. No swimming, no parties, no sports, no gatherings. That is Mr. de Blasio's description of the rules governing New York City's beaches for the foreseeable future. The beaches will be technically open, but the mayor has said he does not want to see people traveling long distances to get to them, especially on mass transit. If you live in the surrounding communities, and are used to just going for a walk on the beach, that's one thing, he said on Monday. But don't travel to the beach, because we don't want to create that dynamic where people do non-essential travel on subways, on buses. He did not say how the restrictions would be enforced. 
Beaches in New Jersey, Connecticut, Delaware and elsewhere in New York State, including popular ones on Long Island, will open for swimming by Memorial Day weekend, with social distancing rules and crowd limits in place. But the city has not made enough progress in stopping the spread of the virus to let people gather on the beaches in any numbers at all, according to Mr. de Blasio. It's just open space that you can walk on, take it in and then go back home, he said on Sunday. Two of the city's most popular beaches, Reese Park and Fort Tilden on the Rockaway Peninsula, are part of the Gateway National Recreation Area and are run by the National Park Service. The rules at those beaches will be similar to the ones imposed by city, park service officials said. With ocean temperatures still in the 50s, it is unlikely that many people would venture into the water anyway. But as the weather and the ocean warm, New Yorkers are sure to chafe at the limits. The city is prepared to fence off the beaches if they start to get too crowded, the mayor warned. Reporting was contributed by Pam Bellick, Michael Gold, Andy Newman, Sharon Otterman, Azzy Pabara, Aaron Randall and Matt Stevens.